Sego Mini. Speedy Sebastian. Sebastian likes to move slowly. He wants to ride a bike, but is a bit scared to go fast. Maybe he can start with a skateboard. Maybe he can start with a tricycle. Maybe he can start with a scooter. That was fun, but he wants to go faster. Maybe a folding bike? Maybe a pizza wheeled bike? Maybe a 10 speed bike? What fun! How about a motorcycle? He could ride a dirt bike. He could ride a cruiser. He could ride a sport bike. Sebastian is going fast. Sebastian is going really fast. Sebastian is going super fast. Wow, a rocket bike, the fastest bike in the world. Whoa! Phew! Okay, that was too fast. Maybe the tricycle isn't so bad after all. Ginger's plane trip. Ginger is flying to visit her grandma, Nola. She has a surprise for Ginger. Ginger arrives at the airport early. She decides to buy a snack. She decides to use the bathroom. She decides to check her flight. She decides to get her boarding pass. On her way to the gate, Ginger has fun riding on an airport buggy. On her way to the gate, Ginger has fun riding on a moving sidewalk. On her way to the gate, Ginger has fun riding on an escalator. On her way to the gate, Ginger has fun riding on a tram. When Ginger sees the airplane at the gate, she feels excited. Soon, she will board the plane. Once on board, Ginger buckles her seatbelt. Once on board, Ginger asks for some water. Once on board, Ginger finds her seat. Once on board, Ginger stows her luggage. The plane speeds down the runway, going faster and faster. The wings lift it into the sky. When the plane is airborne, Ginger reads a book. When the plane is airborne, Ginger writes in her journal. When the plane is airborne, Ginger eats a meal. When the plane is airborne, Ginger watches a movie. Looking out the window, Ginger can see a big city. Looking out the window, Ginger can see mountain tops. Looking out the window, Ginger can see a tropical island. Looking out the window, Ginger can see the airplane's wing. When the plane flies through some clouds, it gets a little bumpy. Captain Jack tells the passengers to buckle their seatbelts during the turbulence. Finally, it's time to land. Ginger watches out the window as the plane touches down with a soft bump and glides down the runway. On the way out of the plane, Ginger peeks into the cockpit. There are so many buttons! In the airport, Grand Manola is waiting for Ginger. In the surprise, Grand Manola takes Ginger to a restaurant shaped like an airplane. Time for more airplane food!
the fire station picnic. Today, the whole town is invited to the fire station for a picnic. Acorn buys grilled corn at the food table. Acorn buys a hot dog at the food table. Acorn buys an ice cream cone at the food table. Acorn buys a veggie burger at the food table. Meanwhile, Miso climbs into a fire truck. She gets to sit in the driver's seat. She gets to turn on the siren. She gets to talk on the radio. She gets to turn on the lights. Inside the fire station, Jack, Junja, and Harvey try on some gear. The gear's really heavy, especially the boots. The gear's really heavy, especially the helmet. The gear's really heavy, especially the big jacket. The gear's really heavy, especially the oxygen tank. Out on the lawn, the friendly firefighters teach about fire safety. Robin learns to never play with matches. Robin learns to test smoke detectors twice a year. Robin learns to keep a fire extinguisher in the house. Ginja wants to be a firefighter someday. She wants to fly an airplane. She wants to drive a fireboat. She wants to drive a fire truck. Harvey says he'd like to help save people in emergencies. Harvey says he'd like to help put out wildfires. Harvey says he'd like to help people in car accidents. At the end of the picnic, they all get presents from the firefighters. Jack's favorite gift is the fire helmet. Everyone gathers for a photo in front of the fire station. What a great day to celebrate firefighters! The silly truck shop. It's a busy day at the repair shop. Fixing trucks is Miso and Acorn's specialty. Oh no, Astrid's cement truck has a flat tire. Let's fix it with a ball. Let's fix it with a wheel. Let's fix it with a pizza. Happy cement mixing, Astrid. Yikes! Rosie's truck lost its wrecking ball. Let's fix it with a pumpkin. Let's fix it with a fishbowl. Let's fix it with a wrecking ball. Happy wrecking, Rosie. Wait, that's not a truck. That's Hugbot. Let's fix him with a hug. Tom has a broken tow truck. Let's fix it with a puppy. Let's fix it with a bathtub. Let's fix it with a new boom. Happy towing, Tom. It was a great day at the repair shop. See you tomorrow. Coral reef cleanup. 
Fins has invited some friends to visit. He lives in the ocean in a sunken ship. Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big hovercraft. Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big sailboat. Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big submarine. Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big yacht. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a school of fish. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a seahorse. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a stingray. Kiki says she'll bring lots of towels to share. Kiki says she'll bring lots of swim noodles to share. Kiki says she'll bring lots of snacks to share. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of Helameda seaweed. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of sunken treasure. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of sea stars. The friends head to the sunken ship. On the way, they see a big cargo ship. On the way, they see sea lions on a buoy. On the way, they see a flying pelican. When they arrive, they slip on snorkel gear and jump in the water. When they arrive, they put on swim fins and jump in the water. Fins gives them a tour. Wow! An amazing coral reef has formed around the sunken ship. The coral looks like beautiful flowers, but they are actually living animals. But when the friends begin to explore, they find a plastic spoon. But when the friends begin to explore, they find a water bottle. The beautiful reef has trash on it. The friends decide to clean it up. They are careful not to touch the fragile living coral. They use a mesh bag to remove the garbage they collect. Now the reef is clean again. It's the perfect home for a sea turtle. It's the perfect home for a lionfish. It's the perfect home for a clownfish. Fins thanks his friends for their help and waves goodbye. When the friends get home, they promise to help keep the ocean clean. H O R
To get baking, Miso put some flour and salt in a bowl. Miso put some milk and butter in a bowl. Miso put some eggs and sugar in a bowl. Next, she mixes the ingredients with a whisk. Next, she mixes the ingredients with a lollipop. Next, she mixes the ingredients with a spoon. The cupcakes go into the oven. The cinnamon buns go into the oven. The cookies go into the oven. They look so tasty that she eats them all. Next, Miso bakes a cake. Next, Miso bakes a pie. Next, Miso bakes raisin bread. She's still hungry, so she eats it too. Uh-oh, now Miso has nothing to sell. Don't worry, Miso, your friends will help you bake more. Now there are treats for everyone. Sometimes making food can be messy. Wash your hands before and after baking. Acorn's birthday surprise. Acorn has to work on his birthday. 
He wishes he could have a party instead. Good morning, Acorn. It's time to start baking, says Miso. They follow a recipe that Miso found in a recipe box. They follow a recipe that Miso found on the internet. They follow a recipe that Miso found in a cookbook. Acorn wonders whether anyone will remember that today is his birthday. Miso and Acorn measure the ingredients. Miso and Acorn pour the ingredients. Miso and Acorn mix the ingredients. Miso and Acorn add the ingredients. Next, they pour the batter into a circle-shaped pan. Next, they pour the batter into a heart-shaped pan. Next, they pour the batter into a rectangle-shaped pan. Next, they pour the batter into a square-shaped pan. Time to put the pan in the hot oven. Acorn is having so much fun baking that he forgets all about his birthday. Rain, rain, rain! Acorn runs to answer the bakery telephone. Miso takes the cake out of the oven. It's fluffy and brown inside. It's fluffy and golden inside. It's fluffy. And green inside. It's fluffy and marbled inside. Miso decorates the cake with yummy sprinkles. Miso decorates the cake with yummy berries. Miso decorates the cake with yummy frosting. Miso decorates the cake with yummy chocolate curls. Surprise! Happy birthday, Acorn! Your friends have arrived for the party. Hmm. Maybe it's not so bad to work on my birthday after all, says Acorn. A recipe is a list of instructions and ingredients for making food. What is this triangle-shaped snack? Onigiri, Japanese rice balls that are made into fun shapes. What snack are they making? Bread, an Australian snack of buttered bread and colorful sprinkles. What's on the grill? Jerk chicken, a Jamaican dish of grilled chicken with a hot spice mixture. What is this dough for? Arepa, fried cornmeal pocket sandwiches from South America. What are all those vegetables for? Gazpacho, a cold vegetable soup from Spain. No more noodles. Uh oh, we're out of noodles. Let's go to the grocery store. Harvey pushes the cart. Harvey pushes the stroller. Harvey pushes the wagon. Robin looks for sprinkles. Robin looks for marshmallows. Robin looks for bird seed. Uh oh, where's Robin? There she is. Harvey finds the milk. 
Harvey finds the cheese. Harvey finds the tofu. Time for a mini dance break. Let's go pay. Let's load the groceries in the car. Let's load the groceries in the bike. Let's load the groceries in the basket. Time to unpack. These cupcakes are delicious, but... We forgot the noodles! Yippee! Let's go back to the grocery store. It's important to measure the correct amount of each ingredient. If you don't, the food won't taste quite right. Get well soon, soup. Acorn is homesick with a cold. He's sad that he can't go outside to play. Miso wants to help. I'll make some soup to help Acorn feel better. She finds a recipe for noodle soup and puts on her apron. It's time to get cooking! She gathers some vegetables, including onions, to add to the soup. She gathers some vegetables, including celery, to add to the soup. She gathers some vegetables, including carrots, to add to the soup. With a sharp knife, Miso carefully chops up the ingredients into little pieces. She adds the vegetables to a big pot on the hot stove. This soup is going to be delicious! Next, Miso measures two cups of water and adds it to the pot. Now it's time for the noodles. Miso adds noodles shaped like hearts. Now it's time for the noodles. Miso adds noodles shaped like socks. Now it's time for the noodles. Miso adds noodles shaped like letters. Miso shakes some salt and pepper into the pot to add more flavor to the soup. She stirs the soup with a wooden spoon, mixing all the ingredients together. As a special surprise, Miso adds one tablespoon of sunflower seeds, Acorn's favorite. The soup is ready. Miso delivers the soup and a homemade card to Acorn's house. When Acorn tastes the soup, it warms him up from the tip of his tail to the top of his ears. He feels better already. Acorn calls Miso to thank her for the delicious soup and for being such a good friend, too. Ginger surprise! Everyone is working on a Big surprise party for Ginger. Jack is busy. He is making the snacks. But wait, here comes Ginger. Can you hide the snacks with your fingers before Ginger sees them? Harvey is in charge of games. He knows that Ginger will love what he's building for her. Oh no, there she is again. We don't want to spoil the surprise. Use your hand to help Harvey hide the pieces from Ginger.
Robin is on decoration duty. Are there enough balloons? As Robin is counting them, she spots Ginger. Quick! Use your hand to hide the balloons from her. Hugbot is in charge of music, and he's put together a band. They are almost ready, but guess who walks by again? Ginger! Use your fingers to hide the band from Ginger, and make sure they stay quiet. Rosie is in charge of the present. She has made a very special one for Ginger. She is wrapping it up when Ginger walks by and says, Who is that present for? Rosie says, It's for a special friend. What special friend? Ginger asks. You! Everyone shouts. Surprise, Ginger! Ginger really is surprised. You helped all of Ginger's friends keep her super fun surprise party a secret. Great job! Some families have moms, dads, sisters, brothers, Grandparents, pets. Who's a part of your family? All about families. Families come in all shapes and sizes. Some families are big. Some families are small. Families can have two or more parents. Families can have one parent. Some kids live with their grandparents, aunts or uncles, or other family members. Some family members look alike, and some look different from each other. Some kids have parents who live apart, and some have parents who live together. Some kids have siblings. We can also add members to our family, like good friends and neighbors. And we can't forget furry friends, too. And we can't forget finned friends, too. And we can't forget feathered friends, too. Even though every family is different, there's one important thing that they all share. Love. In every family, there's lots of love to go around. When we celebrate families, we celebrate love. Three cheers for our families. Today I feel sick. Today I feel hungry. Today I feel grumpy. Today I feel excited. Today I feel calm. Today I feel bored. Today I feel I feel surprised. Today I feel sleepy. Get well soon, soup. Acorn is homesick with a cold. He's sad that he can't go outside to play. Miso wants to help, 
I'll make some soup to help Acorn feel better. She finds a recipe for noodle soup and puts on her apron. It's time to get cooking. She gathers some vegetables, including celery, to add to the soup. She gathers some vegetables, including carrots, to add to the soup. She gathers some vegetables, including onions, to add to the soup. With a sharp knife, Miso carefully chops up the ingredients into little pieces. She adds the vegetables to a big pot on the hot stove. This soup is going to be delicious. Next, Miso measures two cups of water and adds it to the pot. Next, Miso measures four cups of water and adds it to the pot. Now it's time for the noodles. Miso adds noodles shaped like socks. Now it's time for the noodles. Miso adds noodles shaped like letters. Now it's time for the noodles. Miso adds noodles shaped like hearts. Miso shakes some salt and pepper into the pot to add more flavor to the soup. She stirs the soup with a wooden spoon, mixing all the ingredients together. As a special surprise, Miso adds one tablespoon of sunflower seeds, Acorn's favorite. The soup is ready. Miso delivers the soup. And a homemade card to Acorn's house. When Acorn tastes the soup, it warms him up from the tip of his tail to the top of his ears. He feels better already. Acorn calls Miso to thank her for the delicious soup, and for being such a good friend too. Guess what? You're one of a kind. How you look, play, and talk—it all makes you special. A party for Harvey. It's almost Harvey's birthday. Ginger is planning a surprise party for him. First, she needs to send out invitations to all of Harvey's friends. She writes down when and where the party is, then puts the invitations into envelopes. She seals the envelopes with a lick. She seals the envelopes with maple syrup. She seals the envelopes with a sticker. On each envelope, Ginger writes a friend's address. Now it's time to go to the post office. Ginger wonders which stamps she should buy. She likes the flowers the best. Ginger wonders which stamps she should buy. She likes the balloons the best. Ginger wonders which stamps she should buy. She likes the snail the best. She puts the letters in the mailbox so they can be delivered to all of their friends. A few days later, Ginger checks her mailbox and finds lots of letters inside. Each envelope has a reply inside. She opens them up to see who can come. Ginger reads the letters. All of Harvey's friends can come to the party, including Hugbot. Ginger reads the letters. All of Harvey's friends can come to the party, including Jack. Ginger reads the letters. All of Harvey's friends can come to the party, including Miso. Ginger reads the letters. All of Harvey's friends can come to the party, including Acorn. On the day of the party, there are lots of jobs to do. Ginger is excited. On the day of the party, 
There are lots of jobs to do. Jinja is busy. On the day of the party, there are lots of jobs to do. Jinja is nervous. Harvey's friends arrive early to help Jinja set up decorations. Harvey's friends arrive early to help Jinja set up a snack table. Harvey's friends arrive early to help Jinja set up party games. Harvey is almost here. It's time to hide for the big surprise. The friends hide behind the door. The friends hide behind the lamp. The friends hide behind the couch. Surprise! Happy birthday, Harvey! When he sees his friends, Harvey is happy. It's the best birthday ever. Concerned. Unsure. Startled. Pained. Serious. Contented. Satisfied. Defeated. The vet is in. Harvey is a veterinarian, an animal doctor. Today is his first day. Robin comes with her pet hamster, Buttercup. Something's wrong. Buttercup stopped running on her wheel. Harvey checks her. He finds out that Buttercup is dehydrated. She needs more water. Buttercup feels so much better now that she is hydrated. Harvey's next patient is Ginger's fish, Bubbles. Her scales have a bunch of weird spots on them. Harvey runs some tests and discovers Bubbles is sick and needs medicine. Spots are gone. Bubbles feels all better. Up next is Rosie with her pet snail, Salsa. She is worried because Salsa will not move from the corner of his tank. Harvey notices that there's lots of poo in Salsa's tank. He cleans it with a rubber chicken. He cleans it with a toothbrush. He cleans it with a sponge. Rosie promises to clean Salsa's tank more often. Salsa dances around his clean cage. Jack visits next. Are you sick? asks Harvey. Jack says, Nope, I'm just here for my treat. I mean, checkup. Harvey checks Jack's ears. Harvey checks Jack's heart. Harvey checks Jack's bones. So, what about that treat? Jack asks. Harvey says, You earned it. Here's a lollipop. Harvey says, You earned it. Here's a toy. Harvey says, You earned it. Here's a carrot. The obstacle course. It's a special day at the playground. Ginger's made an obstacle course for her friend Jack to try. Ginger says to Jack, when I raise this flag, go! And he's off. Jack takes a running jump over the cone. When Jack reaches the playground, he climbs all the way to the top. Next, he crawls across the bridge as fast as he can. Go, Jack, go! Then, Jack slides down the slide. Yippee!
He's almost at the finish line. He hops on the swing and swings back and forth three times. Then he goes for a spin all the way around the merry-go-round. Jack runs as fast as he can and crosses the finish line. Way to go, Jack! You are so good at obstacle courses, says Ginger. Ready to go again? Jack sighs. I think I'm ready to lay down. A phrase we use under is a slide. Chicken. Bucket. A chicken is under the bucket. Shoe. A shoe is under the bucket. Bench. A shoe is under the bench. Frisbee. A frisbee is under the bench. Slide. A frisbee is under the slide. Chicken. A chicken is under the slide. Bucket. A chicken is under the bucket. Dennis's wacky ice cream truck. Ginger is ready for her after-school treat. What should she try today? Cinnamon bun, bubble gum scoop, pickle, hot dog. A pickle, bubble gum ice cream on a hot dog. Happy birthday, Rosie. Let's celebrate with a special cake. Peanut butter icing. Mustard cake. Carrots. Chocolate icing. Strawberry cake. Cookies. Avocado icing. Banana cake. Mustard cake. Whipped cream on a mustard ice cream cake? Iced with avocado? Yum! Neville can't wait to try an ice cream sandwich. Chocolate cookie. Vanilla ice cream. Tire. Tomato slice, mint ice cream, pizza, pancake. A tomato slice and pancake sandwich with mint ice cream? Delicious! Before Dennis closes up the truck, he makes his favorite snack. Macaroni scoop. Coconut, waffle cone, strawberry scoop, chocolate scoop, pizza cone, rainbow scoop, mango scoop, traffic cone, rainbow and mango ice cream, the perfect scoops to pair with a tasty traffic cone. All frogs begin life inside an egg. A tadpole hatches from the egg. It lives in water and uses gills to breathe. The tadpole grows legs and lungs. Now it's called a froglet. It can breathe air. The fully grown adult frog no longer has a tail. The female frog lays eggs. A male frog fertilizes the eggs. The pond race.
Grace. Hans, Doug, and Finns are going to have a pond race. Darla wants to join. Everyone laughs. She is too small to race. Darla feels unimpressed. Darla feels determined. Darla feels pumped. Ready, set, go! Darla starts off in fourth place. Doug is winning, so he thinks he has time to chew on a wooden spoon. Doug is winning, so he thinks he has time to chew on a branch. Doug is winning, so he thinks he has time to chew on a hockey stick. Now Darla's in third place. Hans pulls ahead, but stops to rest on a comfy rock. Hans pulls ahead, but stops to rest on a comfy turtle. Hans pulls ahead, but stops to rest on a comfy lily pad. Now Darla's in second place. Finn takes the lead, but decides he has time to do some fancy poses. Finn takes the lead, but decides he has time to do some fancy belly flops. Finn takes the lead, but decides he has time to do some fancy flips. There's the finish line. Darla finishes first. Slow and steady wins the race. A rainbow begins with a raindrop forming in a storm cloud. Many raindrops form and fall to the earth. Sometimes lightning strikes and thunder roars. The storm cloud moves away and the rain slows. Tiny water droplets float in the sky. At first, they are hard to see. When sunlight shines through each water droplet, colors become visible. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet light can be seen. A rainbow is a colorful arch made by water droplets in the sunlight. Astrid the Rainbow Catcher! Astrid loves rainbows. She dreams of having her very own. She tries to catch a rainbow with a rope. She tries to catch a rainbow with a jar. She tries to catch a rainbow with a vacuum. That didn't work. She tries reaching for one with a balloon. She tries reaching for one with a stool. She tries reaching for one with a giraffe. That didn't work. She tries using a net. She tries using a fishing rod. She tries using a robot arm. That didn't work either. Surprise! A rainbow hug! Astrid loves Rainbow, and Rainbow loves Astrid. All honeybees start as a tiny egg in a beehive cell. When an egg hatches, 
The larva comes out. The larva grows. The larva will eat nectar and pollen that worker bees collect. The larva becomes a pupa. Worker bees cover the cell with wax. The bee comes out of the pupa and eats through its cell's wax. Bees swarm together and follow their queen to start a new hive. Forest homes. I wonder where the forest animals live. On a hike in the forest, Misu spots a home in a tree. It must belong to a squirrel. It must belong to an owl. It must belong to a bee. Look, someone made a home in a log. I bet it belongs to a bobcat. I bet it belongs to a skunk. I bet it belongs to a coyote. Do you think an animal lives in this pond? It's a nice home for a frog. It's a nice home for a beaver. It's a nice home for a turtle. It's a nice home for a carp. Could an animal live in this cave? A cave is a great home for a bear. A cave is a great home for a fox. A cave is a great home for a spider. A cave is a great home for a bat. Miso finds a home in the ground. This burrow belongs to a chipmunk. This burrow belongs to a marmot. This burrow belongs to a rabbit. This burrow belongs to a prairie dog. Wow! Animals live everywhere in the forest. Sometimes we can't see the moon because it's completely in shadow. That's called a new moon. When the sun lights up one side, we call this a waxing crescent. When the sun lights up half of the moon, it's called the first quarter. The waxing gibbous is when the sun lights up most of the moon. Yay! Now the whole moon is lit up by the sun. This is called a full moon. Uh-oh, there's a little shadow peeking in. It's a waning gibbous now. The shadow now covers half the moon, which is called the last quarter. When the shadow covers most of the moon, it's called a waning crescent. Coral Reef Cleanup Fins has invited some friends to visit. He lives in the ocean in a sunken ship. Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big yacht. Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big hovercraft. Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big sailboat. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a giant clam. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a school of fish. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a seahorse. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a stingray. Kiki says she'll bring lots of swim noodles to share. Kiki says she'll bring lots of snacks to share. Kiki says she'll bring lots of ice pops to share.
Kiki says she'll bring lots of towels to share. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of Helameda seaweed. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of sunken treasure. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of sea stars. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of colorful fish. The friends head to the sunken ship. On the way, they see jumping dolphins. On the way, they see a big cargo ship. On the way, they see sea lions on a buoy. On the way, they see a flying pelican. When they arrive, they slip on snorkel gear and jump in the water. When they arrive, they put on swim fins and jump in the water. When they arrive, they lower the anchor and jump in the water. When they arrive, they set up a diving flag and jump in the water. Prince gives them a tour. Wow! An amazing coral reef has formed around the sunken ship. The coral looks like beautiful flowers, but they are actually living animals. But when the friends begin to explore, they find a water bottle. But when the friends begin to explore, they find an old tire. But when the friends begin to explore, they find a plastic bag. But when the friends begin to explore, they find a plastic spoon. The beautiful reef has trash on it. The friends decide to clean it up. They are careful not to touch the fragile living coral. They use a mesh bag to remove the garbage they collect. Now the reef is clean again. It's the perfect home for an octopus. It's the perfect home for a sea turtle. It's the perfect home for a lionfish. It's the perfect home for a clownfish. Finns thanks his friends for their help and waves goodbye. When the friends get home, they promise to help keep the ocean clean. All moths begin life inside an egg. A tiny larva emerges. It is called a caterpillar. The caterpillar eats lots of leaves and grows bigger. Now the caterpillar makes a cocoon around itself. Inside the cocoon, the caterpillar is now called a pupa. The pupa undergoes metamorphosis, a big change. The pupa has become a moth and comes out of the cocoon. The adult moth finds a mate and lays eggs. Butterfly trip. Acorn and Miso wonder where monarch butterflies go in the winter. Let's follow them to find out. Miso makes sure to pack binoculars. Miso makes sure to pack a map. Miso makes sure to pack her teddy bear. They start following the monarchs in Canada. Look, there are butterflies stopping for a snack. This butterfly is using her proboscis to eat nectar from a milkweed flower. This butterfly is using her proboscis to eat nectar from an aster flower. This butterfly is using her proboscis to eat nectar from a black-eyed Susan. Miso and Acorn eat a snack too. Then the butterflies fly away, so they hurry to follow them. The monarchs get tired and stop to sleep everywhere. The monarchs get tired and stop to sleep on branches. 
the monarchs get tired and stop to sleep on a tree trunk. Miso and Acorn are sleepy too. They need rest to keep up with the busy butterflies. In the morning, Miso and Acorn find monarchs on a dog. In the morning, Miso and Acorn find monarchs on a beach. In the morning, Miso and Acorn find monarchs in a park. Finally, Miso and Acorn arrive in Mexico. There are butterflies everywhere. Acorn takes a picture of the butterflies drinking water. Acorn takes a picture of the butterflies flying in the trees. Acorn takes a picture of the butterflies flying over the mountains. It's warm outside and Miso is hot. She wonders, maybe the monarchs migrate to Mexico in the winter to stay warm? It's time for Miso and Acorn to go home, but they'll come back in the spring. That's when monarchs lay their eggs. When they come back, Acorn hopes they'll see a new butterfly. When they come back, Acorn hopes they'll see a butterfly egg. When they come back, Acorn hopes they'll see a chrysalis. Miso makes compost. Why is Miso saving all the stinky garbage? Because she's making a big compost pile in her yard. Miso can put leftover fruit in the compost pile. She is going to add banana peels. She is going to add apple cores. She is going to add watermelon rinds. She can also add paper to the pile. Miso collects some paper towels. Miso collects some packing paper. Miso collects some napkins. Can Miso add some vegetable scraps? Yes, she piles up some moldy cucumbers. She piles up some potato peels. She piles up some salad leftovers. Miso knows she should not put metal or plastic in her compost pile. So, instead, she will recycle her containers. So, instead, she will recycle her bags. So, instead, she will recycle her bottles. Miso waits six long weeks for her compost pile to decompose. Zzz, zzz. Meanwhile, Misa's worm friends help turn the scraps into compost. Finally, Misa's compost is finished. She can use the compost to feed her tomatoes. She can use the compost to feed her pumpkins. She can use the compost to feed her peas. Wow, look how those peas grew! Miso is a happy gardener. <laughs>